Hey everybody, Nake with VMX here, and I want to do something a little bit different um, and do a Photoshop tutorial. Now this is the first Photoshop tutorial that I've ever done. I've never done anything like this. I've certainly used many, many, many tutorials over the course of years, especially recently as I've gotten a job as a graphic designer for Kazarth Studios and have had to learn quite a lot of new things. Well, um, one of the things that I wanted to find on the internet in a tutorial that I wasn't able to was how to make realistic looking sand dunes uh, for a desert scene uh, for Chronicles of a Dark Lord and I was unable to find that. And I'll just show you an example of um, the issue that I had real quick. Um, I was unable to make sand dunes, so this was the, uh, here let me zoom in, so this was the desert scene that I created for Chronicles of a Dark Lord, Episode 2, War of the Abyss, but I wasn't happy with how flat it was and that there really, there's no sand dunes at all, so, um, because there's really no way on the internet, no tutorials or anything to show you how to do it, so I'm going to show you how to make sand dunes. And just to show you, this is the before picture. Let me show you the after picture so you can see uh, the end result of what it's going to look like. This is um, the new battle background for desert sections in Chronicles of a Dark Lord Episode 2, War of the Abyss, that now looks like real sand dunes is, you know, what a desert would look like. Now, I'm not going to show you how to make the sand because there's more than enough tutorials out there that show you how to make sand textures, but I will show you how to make the dunes. So assuming you have a sand texture, you could make one yourself or you could use a stock photo. You could do it any way you want, but uh, just bring up a sand texture. And uh, I have a couple around here, not that one. Here's a good one. So this is the sand texture that I used. I, I created this and this is the sand texture that I used in the picture that I just showed you from War of the Abyss. So I'm going to show you how to give it realistic dunes. It's very easy. You don't need to download anything. Everything that you need to do and that you need uh, to do this is already included in Photoshop. And um, I know Photoshop really well, but I'm going to assume that you don't. So I'm going to just go through this really, really easily. This is going to be you know, at beginner level instructions. So the first thing you're going to want to do is come over here to the layers palette and check to see if there's a little lock icon right there. If the, if the icon is there, that means the layer is locked. You're going to need to unlock it. So you could do that by double clicking on it. And it'll ask you for a name. The default name is layer zero. It could be whatever you want. Uh, layer zero is fine. So I'm just going to hit OK. So now we can work with this layer. But actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it invisible. And you're going to do that by clicking the little eyeball icon here. And when you click that, it's going to bring up the transparent section of it, which looks like a checkerboard. Now we're going to create a new layer. So come over here to Layers, uh, Layer up here. And then you're going to go over New and then Layer. Or you could do Shift plus Control plus N to do that. Um, another way to do it is to click this icon down here next to the trash can and that'll create a new layer as well and that'll be called layer one. Now what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to fill layer one with any color. It doesn't matter what color. So uh, there's a couple of ways to do that. The easiest way is to click on the paint bucket icon over here and then just to click anywhere in the uh, in the area to fill it in with any color. Uh, the default is black. It doesn't matter what color because what color you fill is going to have no effect on it. If you wanted to do it a different way, uh, you can click Edit and then go to Fill or Shift plus F5. And um, here where it says Contents, and it'll say Use, you just change this to either foreground color or background color. Or if you want to pick a color, you just pick Color. But it really it doesn't matter at all. You just hit OK and it'll fill in. Um, if you can't find the Paint Bucket icon, then it might look like that, which is the Gradient icon. What you do is you just right click on it and switch to paint bucket tool. So there you go. Now you're going to come back over down here to the layers and what you're going to do is you're going to right click where it says layer one and you're going to select blending options and it's going to bring up the layer styles dialog. 
Now, um, you have a bunch of different options here, and uh, the only one you're going to want to use here is Pattern Overlay. So just click on the words, not the box, the words Pattern Overlay. If you click on the box, I'll show you what happens. If you go back and you just click on the box, it'll do it, but then you won't have the options to change it, so then you'll have to click on the words separately. So just bring this up, and here's your default pattern, which is the bubbles pattern. We're going to change that. So just click the little arrow here, and you're going to see all your patterns. The one you want is this one right here, which is called Zebra. Now, if you don't see this here, um, I'm using Photoshop CS4. There are a lot of different versions of Photoshop. They should all have the Zebra pattern there, but if you don't see it, what you do is you click this little arrow here, and uh, just click on the one that says Patterns, and then uh, click on OK. Um, if you get this, you know, you probably have been messing with it like I have, but you probably won't get that, and it'll bring up the default pattern. So just click on the zebra one, and you're going to get the zebra pattern repeated throughout the, um, the entire thing. So click off of this, and uh, here where it says Scale, you're going to want to bring it up. Now you can bring it all the way up to a thousand, but basically, um, these are going to be your ridges of sand. So it depends how much you want to bring it up. Like I have it up to a thousand, but how much you want to bring it up depends on the size of your document. Um, if it's a smaller document, you want to bring it up less. If it's a larger document, you want to bring it up more. Um, one thing about this also is that um, it also depends on how many dunes you want or how you want it to look. So you could really experiment with it. But for now, if you're following along, just bring it all the way up to a thousand um, and hit OK. Now what you're going to do is you're going to select the entire document. There's a couple of different ways to do that. Uh, you can click over here on the rectangular marquee tool and drag a selection over the entire document. Um, another way to do it is to come over here and hit select and then hit all or you can hit control A and it'll select everything. Now you're going to want to copy it, but the thing is if you hit copy like control C, it's only going to cover the black part. It's not going to cover the effects. Uh, so what you're going to do is you're going to hit on edit and hit copy merged or you could do shift plus control plus C. So just hit that. Now over here, uh, down here in the layers palette, you want to click on the tab that says channels. And you're going to see uh, four channels there by default, red, green, blue, red, green, and blue. And you're going to want to create a new one, so you just go down here to the icon that says create new channel when you hover over it for a while. It's the, um, the third one there, so you just click on that. And it's going to create a channel called Alpha 1, and it's going to automatically switch to it. Now let's paste. So you go to edit and paste, or you could use control plus V if you want. Let's click that and you're going to have your zebra pattern here. Now it's a bit blur, it's, it's, it's a bit pixelated, so you're going to want to blur it. So now we're going to go into the filters. So um, at the top here you're going to click on filter, and then you're going to go to blur, and there's a bunch of different options, but the one we want is Gaussian blur, so just click on that. Now how much uh, you blur it depends on the radius, and really it's up to you. Uh, if you blur it less, you're going to get deeper, more defined ridges in the sand, and if you blur it more, you're going to get very shallow and uh, less defined ridges. Um, for the purpose of this tutorial, I'm going to blur it so it's nice and blurry, but so you can still see the black, so there'll be nice deep grooves in it. So for, the, for this case, it's 7.2 pixels, but you want to play around with it. If you're um, moving the slider around and you're not seeing the change here, just make sure this little box that says Preview is clicked, because if it's unclicked, you can move it around and you'll see the difference here but not in the entire document so you want to hit preview there so 7.2 7 is a pretty good one so we're going to hit OK now um, just click where it says red green blue or RGB rather and just click that and it's going to automatically select the original channels and deselect and make invisible the alpha 1 channel now go back to the layers palette and what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to turn off this layer 1 by clicking the eyeball icon and turn your sand layer back on by clicking where the eyeball was to bring it back and then click the actual layer so that it's active. Um, I still have the selection around it and we no longer need that so you can deselect 
by uh, going to select and then hit deselect, or you can hit control plus D, which is the way I usually do it. Um, and uh, what we're going to do now is we're going to run lighting effects filter. So you're going to go to filter and go to render and then go to lighting effects. Click on that. And th there's a couple of different ways to do this, but I'm going to show you what I find to be the easiest way. Um, the style is going to remain as default. For light type, uh, the default is spotlight. We're actually going to change that to omni. And I'm going to, you can actually move this. The, uh, the little Yell, a little white circle is the source of light, and you can move that wherever you want. It's best to just keep it in the middle in this case. And the circle around it represents how far the light is cast. So if you grab one of the edges, you can bring it out and make it much bigger. So I'm going to say bring it out and make it nice and big, but then you're going to fiddle with these. This is the intensity, and I'm going to lower it just enough where it's nice and bright, but it's not too bright in the center. Um, the focus we're not going to change because we're using an Omni, so the focus is turned off. Using Spotlight, you can change the focus of the Spotlight. Um, the gloss, um, just leave it as it is. The material, just leave it as it is. The exposure and the ambience, just leave them as, as they are. Um, once you get used to this, you can experiment fiddling with these to get uh, different sort of textures to the lighting and everything. But for now, just leave them the way they are. Here's where you really want to change it, where it says Texture Channel, the default is going to say None, and if you click that, you should see Alpha 1, which was the name of the channel that we created, so go ahead and hit that. And then depending on how deep you want your ridges, we want nice, deep, defined ridges for this. So uh, for height, you're going to bring it all the way up to where it says Mountainous. And uh, then just click OK, and boom, we have we have sand dunes. Now this is a sort of a top-down view. So if you wanted to have a view that looks like the uh, landscape that I showed you earlier. Wait, oh, one second. Like I said, this is my first Photoshop tutorial. So just bear with me here. If you wanted to create something that had a view like this, which looks really cool. Let me just zoom in all the way. This is what you're going to do. You're going to want to zoom out. Um, you can do that by going to view and then hitting zoom out. But the easiest way, I just hit control, hold control, and use the minus to zoom out. So just zoom it out until it's nice and small. Now you're going to want to transform it. And that's found under edit. And then you go to free transform, or you can hit control T, which is the way I usually do it. So go ahead and do control T or edit transform. And this box is going to appear around your document. Right click anywhere inside the box and it's going to give you a bunch of different options. The one you want is perspective. So click on that. And then what you're going to do is you're going to grab one of the lower corners, either the lower left corner or the lower right corner. So just grab it and then pull it outwards like this. But not too much. And then grab the bottom portion. Oh, actually, wait. Before you do that, you got to right click again and hit switch it back to the original which is free transform then grab the middle and you might want to drag that down like that and if you need to zoom out more just zoom out more and drag it even more but that's pretty good when you're done you could either hit enter or up here in the corner you can hit this checkbox which will commit your changes and then I'm going to zoom back in by using control plus back up to 100%, and you could, well, <laughs> it's actually a little too big, but you could see the nice sand ridges that you got. Now, um, personally, I think that these are a little too black, so what I would do in that case is I would, um, I would undo until I was back here, and then go back into lighting effects and mess with these a little, maybe make it less mountainous, so... Let's try that. Remember, you could always go back. And that looks a little better, but hold on one second. Another thing that I want to show you is, you can see here basically an approximation of what you're going to get. I'm going to bump up the intensity a little more, and I'm going to move this up there, and I'm going to move the exposure down. 
you got to learn to experiment with things. When you follow tutorials, it's very easy to do exactly what the person is showing you. But if you want to really learn Photoshop, you have to experiment with things and try to change up. Like, it's good to follow tutorials by the letter the first time. But then you want to really just start changing things around and whatnot. Another thing that you can do is... Uh, use a different pattern or even draw your own. Um, if you wanted to draw your own, you could go and create a new layer and uh, just fill it up with white like that. Or, And then, uh, by the way, to switch the colors like that, there's two keys on the keyboard that you should always be aware of. X switches the foreground and the background color. And uh, no matter what colors you have, pressing D will change them back to the default of black and white. And then if you uh, go to the brush tool, if you don't see it, it's over here. And if you come up here and you select your brushes, you get like a nice big soft brush, or you can just change these, make it big, and then to make it soft you change the hardness down to zero. And uh, make sure that the opacity and flow are at 100%. And then you can just draw these like wavy, wavy shapes, you know, lines and patterns and whatnot on your own. This isn't going to look great, but I'm just doing this just to show you that it can be done like this. And then um, you copy this. Hold on a second. Copy this and make it and put it into a new channel, the Alpha 2 channel, see? And then basically do the same thing that you did before. So I'm just showing you it doesn't have to be the zebra pattern. It could be any pattern that you want um, to create. So just go into render, lighting effects, and just change this to Alpha 2. And now it's going to be kind of like a lines in the sand kind of thing. See? So uh, just experiment with the different techniques and um, know that if you want to get this sort of 3D effect to give something depth like that, lighting effects is really the way to go, the lighting effects one. And just to show you a few examples of sand dunes that I've done, you've already seen one, but I'll show you a couple of others. No, oh, not those. <laughs> See, here's another one. This has very shallow dunes, and it's a different sand texture. Uh, this one I actually doesn't have dunes, so that's not the one that I wanted to show you, actually. But uh, there is one that I wanted to show you that looks really cool. You just don't remember the title of it right this second. Uh, give me a second here. You could also do it with snow. Let me show you that. If you have a snow texture, you could use lighting effects to create these sort of ridges in snow. That's another thing. It doesn't have to be sand. Um, the thing is that sand, I, there was no tutorial out there for it, which is why I was showing you that in particular. But there is one more of that. Not that. This is all Chronicles of a Dark Lord stuff that I've been working on, but... Oh, here we are. You see, this is a beach scene, and I used a completely different pattern to create sort of a beach look so that it's just not flat sand. So, And this was done with the exact same techniques using the lighting effects. It was just a different pattern. So I just wanted to make you aware that you could follow my tutorial to the letter, but if you really want to create some really cool stuff... Um, you can really just use different patterns, make your own patterns and whatnot, and have fun with it. You know, just, just have a load of fun with it. So this is Nacre VMX, uh, my first Photoshop tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed a little tiny bit of a sneak peek into a little bit of the art from Chronicles of a Dark Lord Episode 2, which is coming out next year. And I'll see you guys on Monday with more videos.